comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. I'm Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Stepping Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Star Rooney, founder and executive director of Ahava Festival. Welcome. Great Thank to see you. For you. Me. Welcome to our table. Poppy Tucker, host of the show Louisiana Eats, airing twice weekly on WWNO Radio. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hi, Hello. Hey. And Errol Laborde, okay. carnival historian <laughs> and editor of New Orleans Magazine, here to recap this year's Mardi Gras for us. Hello, E. Howdy. <laughs> and Alan Smason of Crescent City Jewish News and theatercriticism.com. But first up, Poppy. Well, I knew that Errol was going to be here with his Mardi Gras recap today, so I thought maybe I could do a little Mardi Gras recap because I had the most remarkable experience I have ever had in my life. I met the Dames de Perlage. I met them on the street originally. Oh. It was the most exciting thing when they marched by and there was a woman who I'd never met before. Her name is Diane Waller. Now, these women, the Dames de Perlage, they do this incredibly intricate beadwork. Mm. Um, they got some of their early training, as a matter of <laughs> fact, from Mardi Gras Indians. And this beadwork is just incredible. Well, along comes this woman, and the theme was Fierce Women of Louisiana. Mm. And I'll be darned, it was me. And I, was, <laughs> I was so surprised, I was just simply shocked. And then the other women who I saw who were honored, Ruth Fertel, lots of food people, Leah mm -hmm. Chase, T. Eva, Phyllis Jordan was honored because Aww. she invented iced coffee, and she did. And then, of course, Madame Begay. But what happened when they asked me to their Loon de Gras luncheon, some of the other fierce women were there. And so I yeah. got to be there with Chris Owens huh? and Angela Hill. It, it was just an incredible experience. And I wanted to give a big shout out to them and their remarkable work and what thank them for the fun I had. And, and Leslie Richard, our old producer's twin sister, Ashley's twin sister, she honored Madame Begay. It was just tons of fun. I just want to mention somebody in our staff is one of the, the Dom, and she works on it all. And they, they keep it a secret until the last minute. She would not tell me. And I tried to trick her every so often, like, <laughs> well, what did you say you were doing again? I, I can't tell you. But the person she did probably didn't show up. She did Joan of Arc. <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Her work, it was all stunning and fabulous. So Mardi Gras is over, and a lot of people give up drinking for the 40 yes. days of Lent. And if there's anybody in the audience who doesn't know how they're going to eat their crawfish without a cold beer this Lenten season, I've kind of got the answer for you. This is from our friends at NOLA Brewing. This is an entirely new product that hasn't been on the market before. It's called Hopped Tea. And so this is an oolong tea. It's a green tea that's slightly sweetened with citra hops and coconut and tropical fruit notes of the sabro hop. It's fabulous. And it tastes perfect with a beer, with a, I'm sorry, with crawfish instead of beer. And this one, the rose hip hibiscus, is tart and fruity and floral. It's got bright citrus and wine-like fruit flavors, and it's beautiful to look at. There's lemon drop hops in it. This one's only five calories. This one's 25 calories, and they came out on Ash Wednesday with these big cans. And so you can get the canned product right now at NOLA Brewing on Chapatulas, but it's going to be available in convenience stores, in the grocery store. It's delicious. Give it a try. 
Now, for those who do not give up drinking for Lent, <laughs> I have a great drinking thing to do. There is an incredible new bar that is a speakeasy. It's called the Double Dealer. It's located underneath the Orpheum Theater. The name was, of mm. course, taken from the influential New Orleans Literary Journal of the 1920s. And So you come in from the street and you go down the staircase, and then it's magic down there. There's lots of different experiences to choose from. The main bar has these semi private booths, complete with a red light to switch on when you all want another drink. And then if you need something even more private than that, mm. there are the snugs, which are two-seat private booths with lights that you switch on again when you want a refill. <laughs> Only then, this drink comes extra privately from the bar on like a, a, a swivel thing. It turns around <laughs> and there's your drink. And then... There's large mirrored revolving doors that lead into an event space where they have all sorts of music and performance art going on. And the drinks are incredible. And they're cleverly named after short stories mm -hmm. and poems published in the original Double Dealer. I've been there twice. It's fabulous. Best Negroni I ever had in my life. Well, all right. <laughs> you can also have drinks like looking at the moon and thinking of one far away or desert noon or 1,000 afternoons. But... Go to the oh, double deal. Thank you, Pop. <laughs> the Gronies in these drinks are both acquired tastes. So, <laughs> really gotta, times, you know, Absolutely. <laughs> well, Star, not yes. this weekend, but next weekend, you're going to be extra busy because you're creating a new what, music and arts festival at Waldenburg Park. Yes, um, it's called the Ahava Festival. And what does that mean? Ahava means love, it's a Hebrew term. And Ahav is give, and Ahava is love, and our mission comes from the name Love Through Giving. All right. Yes. So, but it's free, but? It is free, but we do have a VIP, which is $125, but you get food and drinks for the two days. Mm -hmm. But lots and lots of music, too. Yes, and, uh, we're going to have uh, Rock and Doopsy, Amanda Shaw, uh, Bonorama. We have a couple of good acts going on. Groovy good. 7, which is very well known in the city. They do a lot of the Ademian mm -hmm. parades. And you've got some art, local artisans as we well. We do. Uh -huh. um, Tammy Curtis has done our um, poster. Oh. It's a lovely. And speaking of Joan of Arc, she's on the poster. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. <laughs> now, you have a young lady who's an ambassador. Uh, I do. Her name's Emily Randon. Uh -huh. She's uh, Miss Southeastern, also Miss Lafayette. And she is going to take the first year title. She's gorgeous. Oh, okay. She's also going to be performing one of her ballet dances on stage okay. to open the festival. Now, uh, my understanding is that you're hoping th that this will ha happen in other cities in the future, that, but New Orleans is the first time. And yes. I know you're a New Orleans girl. <laughs> I am a New Orleans girl. I, I see it being kicked off from Louisiana, going to Atlanta next, the city. But we do are planning to be here for three years with Waldenburg Riverfront okay. Park. Yes. Well, the website's very important because you can also donate, uh, and um, the proceeds are going to go to various local charities, including, we have to say, WYS, so that we appreciate <laughs> yes. that. But uh, kisses, a, kiss, that, kiss. Okay, so what's yes. it called? <laughs> a have a kiss. A have so a kiss. the kiss oh. is our kiss for charity. It's actually based on, and I didn't realize it at first, but my friend's like, I think that's a scripture, First Peter 5.14. Greet one another with a kiss of charity. So it was pretty cute after that. I was like, oh my goodness, it's going to be perfect for the charities. So Kiss for Charity is actually going to be 100% donations go towards the charities that are chosen. All right, so yes. all on the website as well. So yes. once again, the website is ahabafest.com. Okay. Yes. And we actually are a nonprofit as well, and there's a donation button for us. Okay. We want to <laughs> so into this love fest. Uh huh. Well, very good. Yes. And uh, in terms of preparing this kind of thing, did you decide on the music, or are, are you pretty much the, the visionary on this? The visionary, uh, Dalila Saratine, she's the entertainment director, and she is the one that's kind of put it. Okay. Together, the beautiful music. I mean, it's New Orleans culture. And we also have a gospel tent. Okay, oh. very good. Yes. All at Waldenburg Park next week. Yes, huh? next week. Two days. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. I'm so glad you could be with us. Thank you. Thank you for having and me. And New Orleans Magazine's quiz queen, Julia Street, has a question for us. Last time, Jesse Donner told us, uh, according to the Al Johnson song, It's Carnival Time, 
What place is smoking and what street is rocking from one side to the other? The answer is the Green Room and Claiborne, Claiborne Avenue. Now tonight's question. New Orleans traditionally has major ethnic celebrations uh, for two saints each year. Uh, um, and the, their feast days fall uh, during the solemn part of Lent. What are those and who are the saints? Email your answers to Out at wys.org. Our prizes, a year's subscription to Louisiana Life magazine. Tonight we have a dish tile with the message Elvis Parsley <laughs> from our friends at wearablevegetables.com. We also have a pair of complimentary French Quarter walking tour tickets courtesy of the Friends of the Cabildo. And check their website. They've got quite a few walking tours. You can go to wyes.org slash stepping out for our online calendar, including the Louisiana Food Truck Festival taking place next Saturday, and that's on the North Shore at North Shore <coughs> Harbor Center in Slidell. Admission is free, and you can visit LouisianaNorthShoreHarbor.com to learn more about that. And now, E, E giving us a sort of an overview of how things went this carnival. Yeah. Well, first, it would be inappropriate if we didn't begin by acknowledging the two fatalities uh, during the carnival season. Uh, as we're doing this, there's still a lot to learn in terms of exactly what happened and what can be done to prevent from happening again. They were both float-related uh, float incidents, so um, we'll just know more about it and hope that it prevents it from happening again. But on informed sources after this, we'll talk more about this in, in, uh, in detail. Um, beyond that, it was, uh, uh, it was a good carnival. The, uh, the, 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 the weather teased a little bit. Uh, <laughs> that Thursday night, the, uh, the wind and rain uh, stopped the parades, but, but the police did a very good job of rescheduling those parades. And they all wound up rolling at some point or the other. Uh, some couldn't do it w w with bands or, or marching groups, but they were very, very efficient. Uh, of the three parades that were uh, right now Thursday, two of them moved Friday, and there were and there were already three parades scheduled, and all of it just moved quickly. And so I thought it was very effective. We just wanted to show some um, some miscellaneous slides of, mm -hmm. of, of of Carnival. And the first is uh, being we've been talking about tandem floats, the, the Smoky Mary. This was back when Orpheus first started. This was its first tandem float. And this is kind of a, a simpler thing because it's like a train. It's a train and all the coaches. Eight different cars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And conceivably, you could add coaches as you, uh, as you went along, but it's a good way, kind of a cost-efficient way of carrying a lot of members. But it also reminds people of Smokey Mary's. It's one of these things that, that would just be forgotten. Probably the most sophisticated and complex of all the tandem floats is Endymion's Pontchartrain uh, beach float. This goes car after car, and they're all interconnected, and so all the graphics move back and forth. The uh, uh, the, uh, the the big zephyr and all and all the movement. It's a very very complex. So all these were separated this time around. Right, everything had to be separated this uh, after the fatality. this time around. Yeah. But it kind of shows the artistic side of of why you need tandem floats to be able to do the big thing, to be able to do the big thing like like with with, with Bacchus with the Bacchagator and the Bacchusaurus and uh, an Orpheus with the Leviathan. If you want to go another dimension in float design other than just the boxy float, you got to be able to do those sort of things. We just got to work out some problems with the, mm -hmm. um, with the crowds. Apart from the tandems, uh, it's a couple of my favorite things. The crew of, of Rolling Elvi <laughs> were supposed to uh, march in, uh, I guess they march, I guess they roll, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, they were on scooters, they were supposed to roll in, in muses, and they announced originally that all of those groups would not be when they rerouted muses, but they were there. Uh, they showed up, and so somehow the the real, and it's always fun to see. It's a bunch of guys uh, dressed like Elvis, and when you see them coming, don't get in the way because they're just uh, <laughs> uh, just going away. But this is one like one of the the fun new things that has started, I guess, since post Katrina. Mm -hmm. And then another favorite, uh, I think everybody it always makes people laugh is, is the Lazy Boys. These are these guys in these Lazy Boy chairs. Uh, they leaned back. They Motorized. Got a little, yeah, yeah. They got a little table uh, yeah. right to the side, and it's just a, a fun thing. That's not affected by any of this uh, was the crew of Barkers, which, of course, paraded that Sunday. <laughs> um, even got their, their picture on the, I think the king got his picture on the front page of the, uh, of the advocate. Only Rex has that privilege other than the, 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 the now, king of Now, something lesser known is, um, of course, Rex is very busy with the parade but um, on, on Mardi Gras Day. But in the morning, there's an event at, at Audubon Park. It's the Rex Royal Run. A, a former uh -huh. Rex started it in, uh, 
And so if you're Rex, you gotta be, a, you gotta go run at seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> but there's a big crowd there. They got the official yeah. can of starts. They got T-shirts. And every year that they've done this, every year that they've done this, the official results have always shown that the queen is the winner and, and Rex is uh, in second place. <laughs> and our thanks to Justin Winston for those photos and Judy Batoni for the rest of them that we just uh, got to show you. But I like the little aspects of that, you know, or just even walking around in the costumes. Uh, I don't think most uh, folks, especially from out of town, realize how multifaceted the, the season is. It's sort of balls for all and parades for yeah. all. Huh? Well, a big question this year was um, Rex getting a new float builder. You know, for all these years they've had Blaine Kern and they changed to... Uh, uh, Royal Artists, which is an old company, but run by a young man. And this was his first thing that had a really big, major, well, well, he had some traditional crews. Richard but, Valley, but, 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 yeah, yeah, Richard yeah. Valley. But by all accounts, he performed brilliantly, uh, that the floats looked beautiful, that it had a lot of little subtle things in there that played off um, the sunlight, and so that was very encouraging. I know the Rex people I talked to were very happy with it. Yeah. Now, of course, Mardi Gras night, you and I were extra busy, and many of our folks here at WYS, because we broadcast for the 23rd time um, the Rex Ball in its entirety in the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus. It was a, a quite an evening, and we want to show you uh, a little bit of this. Here are some scenes from WYS's broadcast of the 2020 Meeting of the Courts of Rex and Comus, Mardi Gras night. You know, it's a tr tradition, of course, since 1882. <coughs> if you watch this, note Comus's unique departure from the ball. You will also hear, of course, my voice, Errol's, and Rex organization official, Will French. The Meeting of the Courts of Rex and Comus. The Mystic Crew, Story Charbonnet, Sarah Eleanor Lane. This is the time. Well, and you're meeting for the first time our Queen, Peyton Armistead LaCorn, and Comus himself, who is never, whose identity is never revealed. Never revealed. Every now and then you can start to put two and two together when you see a flag go up the following year uh, on a new house. And uh, that's Comus and Rex put flags on people's houses. They'll, you'll never know the year that it happens, but in subsequent years, you might be able to, uh, to solve a mystery. <laughs> the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus. This is very special for another reason also. They're referring to this as sort of the deja vu meeting of the courts. So these two queens um, are two generations below um, their one's great aunt and one's grandmother, who were the queen of uh, Carnival and the queen of Comus in 1952. Um, and those families were so close and they loved and celebrated the fact that one could be the queen of each. And now you have the same thing. The families are still just as close. And here these two girls are greeting each other, meeting at the meeting of the courts, and the families are just ecstatic that it's happened for a second time. Absolutely. Also between Rex and the two queens, three graduates of the University of Virginia. <laughs> we don't know about Comus. For all we know, Comus might be too. Oh wait, there's something happening here. Let's see. This is very interesting. Oh, forget about um, leaving the ballroom first to start the revelry. It looks like it's <laughs> going to commence right here. <laughs> Cafe Boulot. Mm. Uh. That's interesting. <laughs> uh. Yes, Cafe Boulot. He looks uh. like he knows how to do that. I yes. He does look like. So, what are you thinking, Will? Uh, somebody in the culinary world, I, I, one might think. He's got all the movements. Oh. I've never seen Comus. Uh. <laughs> no. Wow. Extraordinary. Display. Yeah. Display of. I don't, so think, he's, I don't think he's going to leave after all. I think he's going to stay. <laughs> so he symbolically made a café rouleau. Mm -hmm. And here we go, Errol. What are we seeing? This is it. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the final moment. Here's the captain and his lieutenants lining up together. It happens very quickly. Yeah. There it is. The curtains will now close on Mardi Gras 2020. Mr. Crew of Comus. Organi the uh, uh, oldest organization of the New Orleans Carnival. Everything perfectly run, perfectly organized, just absolutely beautiful. What a great Mardi Gras, what a great Rex, what a great Comus, what a great meeting of the courts. And you can purchase the DVD of WYES's broadcast of the 2020 Rex Ball 
in the meeting of the courts of Rex and Comus for $29.95 by calling 504-486-5511 or by visiting our online shop at our website, wyes.org. Air your thoughts about the four-hour live broadcast? <laughs> well, there are a lot of people who don't understand carnival balls and what they're all about and uh, some of the comments I get, just people just don't get it. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who really do appreciate this as a, a cultural expression. Mm -hmm. And they know that the kings and queens you see on the floor don't think that they're kings and queens every day of their life, that for one night that they're, that they're doing something special in their lives. And, 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 and the show gets a, a good rating, and I think there's a lot of beauty in it. I think the, yeah. uh, the music, the music, the, uh, the visuals, the, the kind of jewelry they use, and so it's, it's a very good experience. I think one night a year, People should see something like this. Absolutely. Thank you. And we turn to okay. Alan. <laughs> it's and, your turn, Alan. Yes. <laughs> As usual, well, you know, Mardi Gras gave me an opportunity to sort of connect the uh, celebration of Fat Tuesday with the theater community. And the first, of course, had to do with my writing. Uh, you know, with the uh, Knights of Babylon, I wrote uh, one of the many Baal mosques that I, I composed. I worked, and I actually got to work with the actress and voice talent, Gia Rabito, who's a local actress. She supplied the female voices for the ball. My duty as a narrator, though, uh, you know, came up several times, especially Gallier Hall, and uh, it has for many, many years. This year was no exception. I was here seen with the Honorable Mayor Latoya Cantrell. I was fortunate to call the parades for the crews of Pontchartrain, Carrollton, Druids, Hermes, Okeanos, Mid-City, and Toth, and the rescheduled crew, uh, or I should say Knights of Babylon, as well as my first medallary parade, the crew of Centurions. I also served as a narrator for the official toast for the crews of Carrollton and Iris at the Intercontinental Hotel. And while I was at the Intercontinental Hotel, another local actress, Catherine Talbot, took over as the narrator Gallier, and she did a splendid job there. She even got a new Mardi Gras outfit, you can see, uh, to go along with the job. <coughs> also at uh, Gallier Hall were TV, film, and stage star Brian Batt and his husband, Tom Chianfiki, on hand to uh, toast the uh, king of Mid-City, uh, one of their friends. And then on Lundi Gras, it was time for the Orphe Escapade, of course, a time to visit with former WWL TV anchor uh, Dennis Waltering and his lovely wife, Carol, both big fans of Broadway. We talk about that all the time. And then JPS hair and makeup artist Lauren Hart was there, as well as Justin Boone, who works with the city and knows his way around theater as well. Finally, on Mardi Gras, uh, my lady Carol and I caught up with Edward Cox and Vatican Loki on their way to call the Crew of Rex uh, parade at Gallier Hall. Of course, they go by the other pseudonyms, if you will, of Mardi Gras and Professor Carl Naval. Next year, the big day is on February the 16th, and uh, <coughs> You don't have to look it up, Peggy. It's a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so much for the uh, theater in the streets. Now, let's get on to a little bit of what's going to be on the local boards. First of all, we have some wonderful shows coming up at the Sanger Theater. A uh, short weekend run, though, for Jersey Boys, perhaps the greatest jukebox musical of all time. The story of Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons, and really a great book to go along with that really makes it compelling. Uh, there are songs, of course, that you're going to want to go to Walk Like a Man, Working My Way Back to You, Ragdoll, Big Girls Don't Cry, Who Loves You, all those songs, plus more. The Jersey Boys uh, uh, group will only be on, though, from Friday through Sunday, so if you haven't gotten your tickets already, try to get them soon. And also coming up uh, uh, at Le Petit, uh, opening next week, will be August Wilson's uh, The Piano Lesson. He won his second Pulitzer Prize for this in 1990. This is the story, of course, of a family during the Great Depression and uh, uh, talks about the importance of legacy as well as the uh, possible sale of a piano and what it could mean to the family and perhaps the loss of, of their legacy. Uh, it was the fourth play that Wilson wrote in his cycle of, of Pittsburgh plays and again uh, in that decade of the Depression. Now, that'll be at Le Petit. Coming up at Rivertown, though, we have uh, a prequel of what would be the Peter Pan story. This is, of course, uh, the uh, Tony Award-winning production of Peter and the Star Catcher. This is the backstory of Peter and Mrs. Darling and Wendy. Uh, this is a story that was told by humorist Dave Barry and Rick Elise. Uh, they put it on Broadway back in 2012. It won five Tony Awards, one of which went to Christian Borle in his uh, performance as Black Stash. That would be Captain Hook, of course. And uh, you may remember that back in 2014, only... <coughs> <laughs> actors on Broadway. Brian Batt and his efforts got it over at Le Petit uh, in a, a production that was directed by Bo Bratcher and starred Alex Martinez Wallace's Black Stash. So if you want to check this out, this will be at Rivertown, Peter and the Star Catcher, and that'll be starting up next weekend as well. And then coming over to JPAS uh, at their Teatro Wigo on the West Bank, we have three actors who will be performing in The Complete History of Comedy 
abridged. <laughs> so you'll see that on the stage as well. And that, I think, runs throughout the whole month as well uh, at, uh, at JPAS. So uh -huh. there you have it. Thank you very you much, Do you mind running through your morning schedule again? <laughs> 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 I, I know how, how much time I have here. Well, you know, if I have just a second, I want to mention one thing. Something you didn't mention that a lot of people didn't know about. A lot of these parade cra captains did not know where they were going to get all those extra tractors this year. They pulled oh, off yeah. a coup. They kind were amazing. Of a miracle. Yeah, it really kind was. Of a miracle. Yeah, we don't think about tractors. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You don't. You do not. Right. Now, time for our pick star. Yes, I want to invite all you guys to come out to the big, easy black tie night, March six. It's the kickoff of the weekend for the Yahava Festival, and I would love to come out and see the queen to be crowned. Okay. That Once evening. again, uh, more information on your website. Ahavafest.com. Okay. Great. Poppy. Well, a queen of a totally different sort, without the <laughs> crown. Um, drag queen brunch at Kitchen in the Garden, benefiting the Botanical Gardens. Sunday, March 8th, it's going to be fabulous, beautiful, outdoors. Join us. Mm. All right. Errol. Well, with Mardi Gras being on the 16th next year, uh, that means that the Valentine's Day will be Bacchus Sunday. Oh. And so the question is, will there be... Valentine shaped king cakes. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. And, and do we want that? And are you one of the few people I can ask this question? How is the date of Mardi Gras determined? Oh my God. Okay. It, it has to do with the with the solstice and some ancient monk a long time ago. It's a long explanation. <laughs> it's the it's what is it? The first full moon. The first Tuesday after the first Monday after the vernal equinox. Right. That's it. The astronomical Thank you. full moon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, every year the Louis Moreau Society, uh, which is a, a classical music organization for new classical music, uh, under the leadership of local board chair uh, uh, Morris Rosenzweig, <laughs> who's a composer and a professor, they put on a, a great little festival. This year they're going to feature the young Louis, as they call them, the, the young proteges away. They're going to be uh, performing with New York-based bass baritone Jonathan Z. Harris, who is a New Orleans native, the, the son of uh, uh, some good friends of mine, and, and I know uh, Julian Seth Harris. We want to give a shout-out to them. Eight songs for Mad King. That'll be on Monday. And, of course, the namesake is Louis Moreau Gottschalk, Gottschalk who was the prodigy, child prodigy uh, pianist. He was the very 1800s. first native-born American composer. Yes, very good. And now my pick, the Friends of Music, will present a performance uh, by the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center Piano Quartet. What Wow. This Monday at 7.30 p.m. at Tulane University's Dixon Hall. Tickets are available online at friendsofmusic.org. And check out this week's French Film Festival as well. You know, the Friends of Music, it's an all-volunteer group. It's so impressive, and they've been doing it for many years over at Tulane. Thank you all so very much, and thank you very much for watching. Good night. Support for Steppin' Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area.